blessed morning to everyone. It's a joy and a privilege and, and uh, both humbling din po kasi it's been a while since I've been here. Napakatagal ko po, I think, uh, since pandemic. But I was here during, wala uh, naman pong English, no? English ako ng English. Meron. Ah, meron. Ah, uh, uh, okay. Pastor Richard is here. Pastor Richard, hi. Sister Sophia, hi. Glory to God. It's a joy, as I said, to be here. It's been a while since I've been here. I think it's almost uh, three years now, no? Almost three years since the pandemic. But I was here uh, at night of, uh, of the Kenyan Brethren, Tuesday. I was here also 2 p.m. Last, uh, last, last week, yes. So praise and thanks God for His grace, amen. We are all here to, be, uh, to uh, study the Word of God. And uh, the Word of God today, the message that the Lord that, we, that God has given us is in John chapter 15, verses 1 to 12. If you have your Bible with you, please open up your Bible, your gadgets, your electronic Bible with me in John chapter 15, verses 1 to 12. And uh, pakisundan na lang po ako. John chapter 15, verses 1 to 12. And this is the word of the Lord, which was penned by no other than Apostle John. And this is the word of the Lord. I'm reading from NKJB. And also our monitor is from NKJB. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already cleansed. By the word which I have spoken to you, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. Can you look at your neighbor and say, you are the branches. You are the branch. Amen. And then he continues, he said, he who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Let me just pause for a while and just give you, if you will notice that at first Jesus says that if you are bearing fruit, you will be pruned. We see the progression here that a Christian must have fruit, must have more fruit, and as we continue, God wants us to bear much fruit and the fruit that remains. And to continue, he says in verse 6, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. Verse 7 says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Deepening your roots, mga kapatid, hindi ba? This is our memory verse. Abide in me. If you abide in me and my words abide in me, you shall ask anything that you desire. Ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Verse 8 says, my, By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. And verse 12, This is my commandment, that you love one another, as I have loved you. So, the whole theme of this message of the Lord to the disciple is all about abiding in Christ's love and obeying His commandment. This is the whole theme. This is the core of this message. And this year, yung theme po, the theme that uh, LCC has given us is all about abide and obey. I believe no other time in, in, in our time, especially now, that we need this word. We need this word of the Lord. We need this word of Jesus Christ, especially in the time in which we live right now. So this whole year we'll be talking about obedience, abiding in Christ Jesus. So before I proceed, let us just pray for a while and bow down our head and ask the Holy Spirit, to enlighten us through this word. Father, we thank you for your words, O God. We believe, O Lord God, your word can transform our lives, O Lord God, can empower our walk as Christian. Father, I pray just speak to your servant this morning that I may proclaim your word with clarity, 
with wisdom and with conviction. Father, I pray this in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. To give you a background of why Jesus says this, this is just did not come out of nowhere. Jesus in everything is intentional every time. He preached every time. He shared the word to his disciple. If you will go back to chapter 13, a lot of things has happened. Chapter 13 of John is the time in which what we all know, the Last Supper or the Lord's Table. It is there when the Lord Jesus Christ has continually told them that he will depart and he will go to the Father. There are two things in which why the Lord Jesus Christ teach this, what we call last or farewell discourse. This is a time in which the Lord Jesus Christ, if you will go to chapter 13, that he washed the disciples' feet. In fact, when he approached Peter, he said, Lord, do not wash my feet. But the Lord Jesus Christ again rebuked him, knowing Peter. We all know Peter. He's impulsive, right? He said, Lord, don't wash my feet. But the Lord Jesus Christ rebuked him. He said, if you, I will not wash your feet, you have not, nothing in me. You have, you have no part in me. And then Jesus said to, uh, Peter said to Jesus Christ, Lord, take, paliguan mo pa ako, bath me. But the Lord Jesus Christ says in, in verse 13, you don't need to be bathed because you are already cleansed by the word. Ito po yung binasa natin kanina in verse 3. If you will notice, this is just a continuance of the Lord Jesus Christ's farewell discourse from chapter 13 going to chapter 14, going to chapter 15. Why? Why is Jesus Christ telling this disciple about being the true vine? Him being the true vine? There are two things, as I said. During the Lord's Supper, the heart of the disciples were troubled. Hindi nga ba't, di ba, kung may umaalis, yung naiiwan siya yung nalulungkot? Diba? Parang naalala ko nung umalis si Sister Gay, lungkot na lungkot si Pastor Roy. Iyak siya ng iyak. <laughs> Totoo kaya yun? <laughs> Is that real? Is that true? When, uh, when someone, but it's the reality, right? When someone is leaving, usually the ones who are left are the ones who are lonely, who are sad, who are troubled. Amen? Just like when I went home in the Philippines for 45 days, my wife cannot stop calling me. She's always lonely. She cannot sleep. <laughs> He said, I cannot sleep. You are not beside me. And it's, it's normal. It's normal, no? Because even the Lord Jesus Christ knew the heart of his disciples. He knew what they are going through. He knew the troubles that they are going through because although they, the disciples were not talking, he can discern their thoughts. Most probably, Jesus understood what they are going through. Maybe there are questions in their mind. After all this, Lord, you are going to leave us? After all, I sell all my possessions. After all, I, leave my, I left my career. I left my fishing. I left my, uh, my, uh, my uh, collecting boots. Doon sa mga kay Matthew, na tax collector. They, le they left everything, and then now you are leaving us? This is what is happening in the hearts of the disciples. And another thing is that the Lord Jesus Christ says on that night, he said, one of you will betray me. And according to the Gospel of John, Jesus himself is troubled. He said, my spirit is greatly troubled because one of you will betray me. And true enough, when he got the bread, he dipped the bread and then gave it to Judas. And after that, according to the Gospel again, according to the Scripture, Satan came over Judas and he left the group. But until that time, the disciples have no idea what is going on. They don't have idea that the Lord Jesus Christ will be going the following day to the cross of Calvary. And that's why he gave this farewell discourse in chapter 15. This is the Lord Jesus Christ told them how they will live after they left, they leave him. They left them. So, ano yung nakikita natin dito? that Jesus Christ's love continued to be with them. He's, he cares for his disciple. He cares for the sheep, his sheep. So before we continue, let us look at the word abide. What does the word abide means? Abide means to remain, to stay closely connected or intimately connected. Alam niyo yung palang connection no, is, is ancient. We all 
thought that it's only in our time. You know, everything is about connection. In this life, everything is about connection. If you have higher connection, you can get through life easily. Hindi ba? Sa atin, lalo na sa mga politicians, marami silang connections. Alam natin na pag may bad connections, no, ay irita rin tayo. So, we see here that this word connected, this word abide is ancient. This was taught by no other than the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. It means to dwell in, to persevere in trusting and obeying. It means to hang on. Just hang on. Just hold on. Parang yung pagka hirap na hirap ka na, hindi ba? It seems that you are so tired and, and the command is only just hang on there, kapatid. Just hang on. Just hold on. So this is what the Lord Jesus Christ is telling them. Another definition of abide is to remain in constant awareness of connection to and dependence on the power and presence of our loving Savior. Let me give you four profound truths in this narrative of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is a metaphor. This is a figure of speech. We all know that every time Jesus taught his disciple, he uses those around Around him, he uses the harvest field, the farmers, the seed. And now he uses this, this, he gave this picture to his disciple regarding the vine. Have you seen a grape tree or a grape vine or a vineyard? Nakakita na ba kayo ng vineyard? I saw one in La Union and I tried to pick the fruit and it was not good. We see in this narrative of the Lord Jesus Christ four profound truths. And this is easy to remember. These are four P's. Hindi po ito ayuda, mga kapatid. No? Pagka P's, four P's, alam natin sa Pilipinas, ayuda yan. The first P is the picture. Jesus paints the picture on the mind of the disciples in verses 1 to 3 when He said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, bear fruit, the Father takes away. Jesus said, He takes away. And every fruit that bears fruit, that every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. So, a picture of the vine himself. And then the next P is about priority. Jesus is telling the disciple that after I leave, this is how you must live. This is how you must conduct your life while, while I go to, the, to my father. And then the, net, the third P is the pretenders. Pretenders, what we see in verse 6, when Jesus says, If anyone does not abide in me, he is like a branch cast out and is withered. Nalalanta, natutuyo. And what happened to that branch? They are being gathered and they are being thrown and then they are being burned. So the last P is about the promise. We all want and we always love to hear promises. And the Lord has many promises in His Word. Amen? This is a promise of joy, the promise of answered prayer, the promise of the assurance of our salvation. So we see here the four profound truths in this narrative of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in this narrative, in these four truths, we see in, in uh, chapter 1 alone, we see that the vine is there. Who is the vine? Jesus said, I am the true vine. Amen? And we also see that the vine dresser, meaning God the Father. And then we see here the non-fruitful branch and the fruitful branch. The four basic parts on the picture that Jesus paints on the mind of his disciples. So let us look at the picture. The picture. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, it takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already cleansed because of the words which I have spoken to you. Why did Jesus say you are already clean? Because Jesus knew that one of them is not yet clean. One of them is not truly his disciple. One of them will betray him, and it's no other than Judas Iscariot. He's talking about here the Judas branch. And we'll talk more about that later. So the vine. When Jesus said, I am the true vine, this is actually the seven, one of the seven last I am that Jesus uttered. 
We all know that he said, I am the bread of life. When he said, I am the bread of life, he is the bread that sustains physical, our physical needs, not only our physical needs, but also our spiritual needs. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 4, 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds in the mouth of God. That's why he said, I am the bread of life. It is, I am all that you need to sustain you physically and spiritually. And then he said, I am the light of the world. Kinanta natin kanina, no? I am the light of the world. The world is in darkness. The world is in chaos. And apart from Jesus, there will be no order. Amen? He said, I am the door of the sheep. Jesus protects his sheep. Jesus loves his sheep. And that's why even to the point of death, as he go, as he marched to, to Mount of, of Calvary, he's continually showing them his care for them. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Death is not the final word to those who are in Christ. Hallelujah. We have a blessed hope. We have a blessed hope that every believer is waiting for the return of Jesus Christ. Amen? That's why he said also, I am the good shepherd. Jesus is committed to each and every one of us. To each and every one, when he called us, he is committed not to forsake us, not to leave us. And then he said our favorite scripture, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the source of all truth. The knowledge about God is found in Jesus Christ. And then this last statement when he said, I am the true vine, it's a declaration of Jesus' deity. He's declaring that I am God. I am all you need. I am the source of life. Don't go to other sources. While I am away with you physically, which he promised, the Father will give you a helper, the Holy Spirit, to guide you in all your ways. Do not look for other sources. This is what the Lord Jesus Christ is telling the disciple. He's saying, I am God. I am of the source of all your needs. When he say, I am a true by he's saying, I'm the real one. I am the authentic. That's why he said, I am the way. There's no other way apart from Christ. You'll not find contentment in life apart from Jesus Christ. Amen? You may, you may gain the whole world, but Jesus said, yeah, you may gain all the wealth in the world, but that, what that will do with, for you. Remember the rich young ruler when he approached Jesus Christ, when he said, Master, good teacher, what must I do to, to earn eternal life? We all know how rich that young man is. To cut the story short, he was not able to follow Christ because it was too hard for him, the commandment of the Lord Jesus Christ, to sell all his possession and follow him. So we see here that there are, why did Jesus Christ, by the way, tell, I am the true vine? In the Old Testament, when you talk about the vine or the vineyard, it talks about the nation of Israel. I will not go through that. You go read, I encourage you to read chapter 5 of Isaiah. It says there that Israel as a nation is his vineyard, his own people. But the problem was Israel failed miserably. They could not obey the commandment of God. They failed miserably that instead of being light to the Gentiles, they secluded themselves and they become, they become idolatrous. Not only that, they did not become light to, the, to their neighboring nations. So Jesus is saying that, well, Israel failed, I will not fail. I am the true vine. He's authentic. Why? Because that time, every time Jesus preached, we all know that he had haters. The number one haters are the Pharisees. And why Jesus said that I am the true vine? He knows that when he lives, the disciple will be vulnerable on the teachings of the Pharisees, many times they remind, he reminded them that be careful of the teaching of the Pharisees. Because the Pharisees teach about work, work, work to earn salvation. They don't even teach that there is, there is grace in God. It's all about work to earn God's favor. But we all know that we are all saved by grace, not by works. Amen? Hallelujah. This is what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying. I am the true vine. And then he said, my father is the vine dresser. 
In verse 2, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. If you will go to chapter 14, it's amazing how many times, 21 times, the Father is mentioned. 21 times. What does that tell us? That God the Father is involved in everything that we do in our life. Whether small or great, He wants to be involved. Amen? Akala natin kasi, no, yung mga, when we go to God, yung mga big things lang, big issues in life. But no, He wants every details of our life. He is involved in everything. If you will read chapter 14, He, he even sent the Holy Spirit, the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you with all things and bring you to remembrance all the things that I have said to you. So, God the Father is involved in our spiritual growth. Amen? He's the gardener. He, he's, he's the one who prunes us. He's the one who, who transforms our lives with His Word, with His presence. But let me tell you this. The Father is looking for something. Since He is the farmer, since He is the gardener, since he's the one by taking care of the vineyard, what does he expect from the vine? From the branches, from the vineyard, he expects fruit nonetheless. Amen? If you want to plant something, you expect something to get out of it, right? If you, want, if you plant banana, you want to, to reap banana. If you plant something, Definitely, as a farmer, you expect something in return. Amen? Same as the Father. That's why this is the whole reason why Jesus Christ is giving us this metaphor. Giving the metaphor to the disciples. It is the farmer's right to expect fruit from his vineyard. Sino ba naman magtatanim tapos for fun lang? Sino ka nagtatanim? For fun lang? Kasi walang magawa. No? Walang nagtatanim. Alala ko tuloy nung umuwi ako. Just recently, I went home. We have a neighbor in front. And they have this uh, lady finger, okra, right? And this man, rain or shine, he's there tending the, 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 the plant. And my mother, is, she's just there in the morning for 30 minutes. But during the, the, the harvest, my mom would harvest like, full basket of uh, lady finger. But that man who, who spent his time almost all day without clothes, rain or shine, just get this kind of handful. And he's so upset. That man is so upset and then approached my mom. This was only told me, to me by my mom. He said, what are you doing? Why do you have so much fruit? And then my mom teach him, this is what you need to do. Alam niyo, nanay ko, ano siya, yung tawag dito, may green thumb. Alam ba yun? That, is that what you call that green thumb? Everything that she plant, it grows. I remember, Pastor Roy gave her a katleya. Now it's like three, three trees now with, with, uh, with flowers, beautiful flowers. And then he asked my mom, what do you do? Because I've been caring for this thing, but it didn't give me any, any fruits. And I'm so upset. But my mom taught her, taught him, you know, uh, give him, pinausukan, alam niyo yun sa atin, no? Uh, pinausukan, tapos uh, sometimes you have to sing. O kinakantahan pala yung halaman, ano? O, parang tayo, kinakantahan din tayo ng Panginoon, di ba? Parang, uh, parang tayong hinihele. Talaga, kailangan bang talagang kantahan yun? Eh, mukhang hindi maganda yung boses nung, uh, nung aming kapitbahay. But true enough, he followed the instruction of my mom. And after a while, after a month, or 45 days, they are the one giving us this lady finger. I received one full packet of plastic. So, to give you, I, I think you get my point, amen? Every farmer that plants expect fruit. The father expects fruit from us as his people. So what are these fruit? What are these fruit that God the father is looking after us? Well, you might say that the fruit of the Holy Spirit? You might say the fruit of our obedience? You might say that the fruit of witnessing others, witnessing Christ to others? Well, all of those things are needed. 
You can just, you cannot just choose one. Lord, I'm good at this. I'm, I'll concentrate on this. Let me talk to you about before you get fruits. Because if you will go back to verse or chapter 1, we'll see here or verse 1 to 3, it says that if you bear fruit, the branch that bear fruit will be pruned. Amen? And it's so essential in every Christian life to go through pruning. And we don't like pruning. Let me tell you, no Christian would say, Lord, I want to be pruned, oh God. I raise my two hands. I want to be pruned. Nobody wants to go through pruning in life, in our Christian life, because it's not easy. It's hard. You'll get rebuke. You'll get really, you'll, the word of God will really convict you as one of his ways to prune us. There are ways in which the Father prunes as we abide in his Son, Jesus Christ. And the number one is removing our dependencies. He removes those it could be a person, it could be a career sometimes, our job. That's why sometimes God remove our job because we are too dependent on our job. We are too dependent upon a person. We are too dependent upon something, about substance, anything that we are dependent, the Lord sometimes remove. Sometimes there are things in our lives that we are dependent upon that are keeping us away from being, being dependent to the vine itself, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. This, this could be an experience or an identity or fame. What is fame? Yes, you are famous here on earth. You are wealthy on, on earth, but you are poor in heaven. What does that give you? You might be famous on earth, and yet heaven does, doesn't know your name. It doesn't give anything at all. It does no eternal value. So we see here that God sometimes, through pruning, He removes something that we dearly love. I don't know about you, but I went through hard pruning in my life, and it was not easy. But it is essential for our growth. Amen? It is essential for our growth. That's why when we go through pruning in life, sometimes we should avoid complaining and start asking, Lord, strengthen me. I know I'm going through discipline. Strengthen me on this stage, on this season of my life to get through with this. And then he add affliction. This is true. We don't often like to think about God being the source of our affliction, but sometimes he is. Sometimes he uses things, trials, circumstances, hardship in life, so that with those trials, when we triumph, God gets the glory. Hallelujah. He adds affliction. Christianity is not, you have heard this many times, this is not new to you, this is not new to us, but we must hear this. Even this passage, we all know this by heart. But as I said, no other, in, no other time, this is the best time, this is the most important time in which now we live to hear this word of Jesus Christ, to abide in Him, to remain in Him, to get connected with Him, to be intimately connected with Him. Why there's so many distractions in the world right now? Amen? We get distracted easily. You're reading the Word of God. You are meditating. Your phone rang. You check. No, you are praying again. Your phone rang again. Tumunog na naman. There's so many distractions in life right now. And that's why the Lord Jesus Christ said, you will be distracted with many things, but this is the Word that I will give you. This is what you must do. Abide in me. Stay in me. Stay in my presence. The addition of affliction. There is, but this is the good news. You know, sometimes don't be so guilty, no? Mga kapatid, that sometimes parang, parang iniisip natin na parang yung kanta ni Sharon, pasang ko ang daigdig. No? Isn't, the, the Bible is very clear that the Lord does not repay us as our sin deserve. That's in Psalm. You know, but sometimes, this is the good news. When he, God does afflict us, it is for our own good. It is for our benefit. It is for our spiritual growth. Romans 8.28, we love that scripture. Amen? We all know that scripture. Again, it's in growing strong. Praise the Lord. The addition of affliction. And then, the third way he prunes us is the allowance of persecution. The Apostle Paul talked about the many ways he experienced, experienced persecution, and he concluded it this way, 
2 Corinthians 4.11 reads, For he who lives are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh, so death is at work in us, but life in you. Even when we experience persecution of, because of our faith, we are given to a point that we rely greatly on Christ. Kaya nga sabi ni Paul, di ba, we have this song, Trading My Sorrow, Pressed but not crushed, persecuted but not abandoned, crushed down but not destroyed. We go through persecution to strengthen our faith. Amen? No Christian, ask yourself, you know, sometimes we are so happy when we are not going through persecution, but ask yourself, if you are truly a Christian and you are not going through persecution, maybe ask yourself. That's why Paul says, examine if you stand in the faith. Because it is written in the Bible, it is Jesus Christ himself that those who will follow him will be persecuted. I don't know what persecution you're going through, but don't, as I said, don't complain when persecution comes to us, but embrace it. Because it's part of our spiritual growth. It is part of pruning. It is where God is removing and shaping and molding us to be the same or the same image of His Son, Jesus Christ. Christ-likeness. I will talk to you about that regarding the fruit. And then the number four ways that He prunes us is through convicting our sin through His Word. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10 to 11 says, Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret, but worldly sorrow brings death. We all know what happened to Judas, right? It was not a godly sorrow. It was not repentance that brings forth righteousness. It was a remorse, and that's why you know, Repentance is not about just feeling lonely or feeling sad or feeling sorrow because if you will go to Hebrews chapter 12, when God disciplines people, the Bible says that Esau cried with many tears but found no repentance. You can cry all you want. You can have a God or, or worldly sorrow or sorrow will be, be really very, very sad and yet do not really repent. Judas killed himself. It was a worldly sorrow. That's why many people commit suicide. Because it is a worldly sorrow. It is not, it is not motivated by God's love. Because God's love will always bring life. Amen? Will always bring life. Will always bring hope. Then he continues here in verse 11, For see what earnestness this godly grief has produced in you. Kaya nga tayo, no, when we are convicted by the Word of God, we change. And that's why when we read the Word of God, it's not just information. That's why many Christians don't grow. Why? Because, you know, sometimes this is in our hermeneutics. I love, I love our lesson on hermeneutics. We don't read or we don't finish or we don't try to finish the Word of God because when Pastora will ask us, who finished last year? And we can raise our hands. Okay? But nothing really goes in here. You know, we are, we are encouraged to read small passages, but really dig deep into it. And I was convinced by the word of Dr. John Del Jose that we read the word of God not to raise our hands, when our lead pastor or our senior pastor will ask who finished, well, it's a good thing we finish the whole Bible in a year. That's a good thing. But if we'll finish it and yet doesn't give us transformation, but only information, that is for nothing. Amen? We should read the Word of God not for information, but for transformation. Hallelujah. That's the, that's the whole reason why Jesus is, has been with the disciples for years, teaching them day in and day out. It is to transform their lives. We see here that the Word of God, the most powerful tool that God uses to convict us from us, to prune us. Because this is the mirror of our life. As we read the Word of God, we slowly, we meditate on it, and we become, how does it apply to us? Practical application in life. It's, these are all the essential things 
that God prunes us. He prunes us by convicting our sin to change our way, to shape us. So, we see the picture that Jesus paints. He is the true vine, he said. And then, he goes on to say that his Father, God our Father, is the vine dresser involved in all things, shaping our lives, molding our lives for us to bear more fruit. And then he talks about the non-fruitful branches. In verse 2a, when he said, Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And then if you will go to verse 6, it says, If anyone does not abide in me, it's like a branch, or he's a cast-out branch, and is withered. Nalalanta. What's interesting is this. When Jesus said, every branch in me, you see that word, every branch in me, they are connected, seemingly connected, but they are not really connected. You see these non-fruitful branches, these are like the follower. You see them in the church. What Jesus is pertaining there here, actually, because until that night, why Jesus used this analogy, this metaphor, is because vineyards are familiar or it's, it's everywhere in the Middle East, especially in Israel. Remember the time when he sent the 40 spies and then they got these two guys are really get or uh, taking these fruits. Look, ang lalaki ng mga bunga ng grapes. I don't know how big it is, but two men are carrying isang tangkay ng grapes. Just imagine that, how big that fruit is. Gaano kalalaki yun? Jesus is telling that there are people who goes to church, caught up in the activity, in the flow of church, serving Christ, but really, they are lost. And that's why many times you will hear in the pulpit, pastor will preach, being a member in the church does not guarantee you salvation, but only faith in Christ. Hallelujah. Faith in Christ, saved by grace through faith in Christ. Not by membership in the church. Not of these old things are good. But you see, don't caught up with the activity of just serving. Be attached to the true vine, the true source of our spiritual growth. Amen. This is what religion does. Amen. This is what the Pharisees does. Ito yung ginagawa ng mga Pharisee. They set standard things for people to follow, but all that what they are doing are for external things, but nothing really happening in the inside. No transform transformation in the heart. All of it they are doing just to impress people, to please people, to please the pastor, to please the leader. No, it's not. When we serve God, our first and foremost motive is because we love Him. We want to please our Master. Amen? We want to please our master. Jesus Christ talks about here, I'm sorry for my word, that there are Judas in the church. Katawa kayo, di ba? Ako rin, nung pinag-aaralan ko to, marami pala talagang Judas sa iglesia. No? Ito yung sinasabi actually ni, ni, ni John then, who wrote this in the book of John. If you'll go to 1 John chapter 2, verse 19, this is the word of John. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For they had been with of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out, that it might become plain that they are that they all are not of us. But you have been anointed by the Holy One, and you all have the knowledge. You see, these are the non-fruitful branches. Non-fruitful bearing branches are the ones that are not attached to the vine. They seem to be attached. You know, if you will go. Just look at the three years Judas was with Jesus. Judas witnessed every miracle that Jesus did. Amen? He witnessed how Jesus raised Lazarus in chapter 11. Judas was there. Judas saw the miracle when Jesus fed the multitudes with five loaves of bread and two fishes. He was there. In fact, Jesus taught them a lesson. Not only Judas, but the whole disciples. Imagine the disciples are saying, Lord, send them away because we don't have much food. Even if we go to the market, it's not enough. It's already late. No, tell them to sit down. And what's amazing, sometimes, you know, Jesus uses, uh, sometimes, merong tawag dito, sense of humor ang Panginoon eh. You know, after that, he feeds the multitude with, the, with those things, with, with five loaves of bread and two fishes, what was left was amazing. It could have been one basket full of basket of bread. It could have been two. It could have been three. 
But no, it was 12 basket. Full basket was left so that all the disciples could carry and let them be reminded of their unbelief. 12 baskets full was left. Unbelievable. Sometimes Jesus has a sense of humor in other way nga lang. You see this? The non-fruitful branches are not receiving their life source from the vineyard or from the vine, sorry. You know, Judas, among all the disciples, he's the, masasabi natin, he's the one who is, masasabi natin rich. Hey, mayaman. May, if you will go study, again, this is uh, Peshat, okay? If you will go and study the life of Judas, sa mga disciples, siya yung masasabing merong kaya, may kaya. That's why he's the treasurer. Eh. Kaya nga sa church, di ba, yung mga accountant, sila yung mga nag-aral talaga, nasunog ng kilay, sila yung may mga pwesto sa, sa companies. no? And Judas was one of them. Judas was actually an elite. He's, nasabi natin na may kaya siya, that's why he's the treasurer. But the problem with Judas was, his focus was not on Jesus Christ. He goes with the crowd because Jesus is famous. Wherever Jesus go, a lot of people came to witness or to hear him speak. They want to see the miracles that Jesus do. And Judas was there. And yet there was nothing inside, no spiritual transformation in his life because he was focused so much on the thing that he's doing. He's just getting caught in the flow of ministry. Ministry, we all hear this sometimes, we are being busy with the kingdom, but not with the king himself. We have heard this many times. And we are constantly needs to be reminded that we need to be busy with the king. Amen? They are intertwined. These, these non-fruitful branches are intertwined among believers, real believers. You cannot, you cannot tell if they are faking it. You know, in the church, it's easy to smile. Okay? Because here there is no competition. There is here there is no opposition. But what the real thing is when we go outside? Ano ba yung nakikita sa atin? What do they see? What do the world see? Are we be bringing fruit to them? Are we being Christ-like to them? Or we go back to our workplace with our hard manager? Can they see our patience? Or lagi tayong nagko-complain? You see, think about the context again. Like, what type of person might this be? Just going through the flow, but not really being born in his heart. Not really being born again. There are many of this in the church. I've witnessed many, many come and go because their knowledge of Christ starts only here, but they do not allow them to put go inside, deeper in their heart. This is just like Judas. It's just going to the flow. And this is the sad reality. There are people who look like they are followers of Jesus Christ. But nothing can be hidden from God. Amen? All of what we do in secret place is revealed in the eyes of God. And Jesus knew what is in the heart of Judas. There are people who think that they are their close proximity with... You know, there are many... And I, I've experienced this... There are many things, or many people will come to the church because, especially men, no? Yung manliligaw lang sa iglesia. May nakitang maganda, magcha-church. No? Pagka, pagka napasagot na yung babae, wala na sa church, hindi mo na makikita. Totoo ito kasi, sabi, in my, my sister-in-law, nung naliligaw pa yung kanyang asawa, laging nasa church. Matayin pa ka na EGR eh. There's something I discern, sabi ko, hindi ito tatagal eh. They look like they are in the, they are look like they are attached in the vine just like Judas but they are not really getting the nutrients that the vine is producing to them why because in proximity being close physically but not spiritually will not guarantee you growth amen sabi mo sa katabi mo don't be pretender masakit minsan ano masakit minsan yung marinig Diba may kanta nga, Oh yes, I'm the great pretender. Ayaw natin kantahin yun. We don't want to sing that song. You know, we want to be the fruitful branches. Amen? Amen. We want to be fruitful. We want to be, we want a pleasing life to the Lord. And then we'll go to the, 
The four basic part of this picture that Jesus paints. He said that I am the true vine. He said that the Father is the vine dresser. And then he pictures the non-fruitful branches. What happened to the non-fruitful branches? Ano nangyari doon? They are being thrown away. Then he, so, he goes to the fruitful branches. I love this. We all want fruit to be fruitful. Amen? Amen. That's our desire to, to bring fruit for the glory of God. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already cleansed because of the words which I have spoken to you. As I said, ano kayang frutas ito? Ano pa yung fruit ito? What kind of fruit does the Lord, the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ is seeking from us? Ano, yung hinahaw- ano ba yung gusto niya? Sabi ko nga, we think about the fruit of the Spirit, but let me give you three fruits. Number one fruit that the Lord is looking for us, of course, is the transformation of our character. Amen? If one truly received Christ, he cannot hide the transformation in his life. Amen? It will be seen, the fruit of the Spirit. This is what we call the inward fruit of character. The inward fruit of character, God gets the glory when our character is transformed. Amen? No one can transform you except the Holy Spirit, the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Our leaders, our pastors, the words that you hear now, the words that we, we study, they are all helpful. But it is the Holy Spirit who transforms our character. The fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, kindness, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, amen, faithfulness, and then self-control. If you will see this fruit, why is self-control at the peak of that fruit? Because it's the hardest of all. It's hard to control yourself, especially if you are provoked to anger, if you are provoked to criticize. And in the church, hindi tayo ligtas sa criticism, hindi ba? Bakit nasa harap yan? Ang pangit naman ng boses. No, dapat nasa ushering na lang. Lagi nating naririnig yun, di ba? We always hear that. No, we always hear. Because sometimes we cannot control our, our lips. Kaya nga, usong-uso yung marites, hindi ba? Usong-uso yung tolits, hindi ba? Ayan, ang galing kita muna. Alam na alam. That the, the youth, they know those things. Na alam, nalaman ko lang yan nung umuwi ako ng Pilipinas. I know those words. Tol, anong latest? <laughs> See, the fruit of the Spirit, the inward fruit of the character is being required by God. To all His people. Hinahanap ng Panginoon yan sa atin. Kaya nga, sadly, aminin natin, lahat naman tayo may attitude pa rin. No? All of us in the church have attitude. All of us, we are easily offended. You know? We are hard to love. While studying this, I actually ask myself, Lord, can we love? Kaso, see, if you go to verse 12, let me jump to verse 12. Allow me to jump to verse 12. Jesus said, this is my commandment, that you love one another. You love one another. And if you will go to back to chapter 13 of, of this John, 34 to 35, the Lord Jesus Christ says, this is the new commandment I'm giving you. Love one another as I have loved you. And so that you love one another. By this, all men will know that truly you are my disciples. But sadly in the church, parang hirap nating magmahal, no? Especially if, if his idea, her idea doesn't match your idea. Her ideologist, my ideologist is not going to the same, same track. And we sometimes criticize each other. We sometimes bite back each other. But the Lord Jesus Christ says, love one another. This is love. The first on the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love. You see, not peace, not joy. But he said, this is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love. And then to the peak, self-control. Kung titignan in the middle is love, joy, and peace. All of those things, if you truly love and you have self-control, all these things just, just naturally will flow. Those kindness, goodness, faithfulness, because it is sandwiched by love and self-control. What do I mean by that? Because there is one, one lady, one Christian, I don't know if you know Anne Rice, She's a novel writer. She's the one, if you watched the uh, uh, interview with a vampire, she's the one who wrote that and many, many vampire movies. She became a Christian and joined a church. 
an, an evangelical church. And in that church, he didn't see any love. The brethren are backbiting, fighting with each other, being offended with the word of the, of the leader, of the brethren. And then she get out from the church and then make an, an autobiography. And it's even now in Wikipedia, search for that. And she said, I don't have to do anything with this Christian. They are chaotic, that's her word. They are backbiting. They are fighting with each other. I don't see any love. So I better isolate myself from this kind of people. Sometimes it's the hard reality. Hindi ba? It's a hard reality. That's why Jesus said, God is looking for us fruit of love. That even we don't like him or like them, love them. Yun yung tanong ko eh. Can we love a person even if we don't like them? That's a hard question. I leave that to you. Kasi hanggang ngayon, hindi ko pa rin siya ma-reconcile. But it's the truth. Can you love a person even if you don't like him? God never liked our sins. He never liked our sin and yet he loved us. Amen? He still gave his life to us. That while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. Kaya nga yung love, love should be the one that motivates us to abide in him. When we read the word of God, it's not out of obligation, but it's an act of our love. Amen? Hindi pa pag in love na in love ka, tayo noong araw, hindi ko naman sinasabi ngayon, hindi na tayo in love. We're still in love with our wife. We want to read the letters, hindi ba? We want to open the messages. Excited tayo pag may mayroon silang message, hindi ba? Ngayon, pag nakita mo na sa messenger, ay, asawa ko lang yan, maging nabuksan yan. <laughs> only from my wife, it's only from my husband, it's okay not to open it. I'll just do what I'm doing right now. It's not important. But before, because we love them so much, yung pag nag nag-clink pa lang yung cellphone, no, talagang ando na kagad, nakabots, pag nakita, o open kagad, hindi ba? Ganun din tayo, ganun tayo nung... I'm guilty of this. I'm not saying you are not... I'm guilty of this because when I came to know Christ when I'm in Saudi Arabia, I couldn't wait when my, 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 my shift is over. My shift is from 5 till 1 a.m. And then, glory to God, no? I, I'm really, I really want to read the Word of God. In three months, I finished the Bible when I was in Saudi Arabia because in, my, in our room, my mentor there, we don't have television. He said... Television is evil. They just pollute your mind. We have radio, and what we hear only are music, worship songs. That's all we read. That's all we hear. And then one time, because of course you sometimes miss to watch what's happening in the world. Okay, you want news. And he will follow me and said, what are you doing there? Get out of there. Don't watch TV. Come inside. No, para tuloy akong nasa kulto. Well, I was in oneness that time. Hindi naman siya kulto, mga kapatid. So, See, to go, to go back to this fruit that God requires really is to love. Love one another as I have loved you. This is what the Lord Jesus Christ set aside sometimes our own feeling. Set aside sometimes our own emotion, our own ideologies. Peter, John, and James were the core. Sila yung core ng Panginoong Jesus. But to be with Peter, just imagine that in the church, no, may isang Peter, parang hirap makasama nun. Diba? Impulsive, parang laging bida. Gusto niya, siya lagi bida. Pag may inuot, ako pastor, ako opening prayer. Ako. E ako mag-open doon ng alpa, ako. Parang parang hirap makasama ng gano'n. No? It's very hard to have a Peter in, in the church. But yet, they go hand in hand. The ministry went well with John, Peter, and J J James. Because nagrema eh. The word of the Lord Jesus Christ was engraved in their heart. So they set aside their their own characters and focus on what the Lord Jesus Christ has told them to disciple all nations. Amen? Inward fruit of character. This is essential. We need to change. We need to be transformed. And we can only be transformed as we abide, as we rest in the Lord Jesus Christ. Another term for abide, if you will notice of all the disciple of Jesus Christ, who remains till the end? Who remains? John remains. Peter says, Lord, even at death, I will follow you. What did Jesus said in chapter 13? Peter, three times you will deny me. Even 
before the rooster crow, you will deny me three times. Kaya nga sa heaven, ang iniisip ng tao, si Peter ang nakatayo sa pearly gates, may hawak na manok. No? Yun ang isipan, the conception of people, that Peter is na pearly gates and holding a chicken. Eh sabi nila, kaya maraming sabungero sa Pilipinas dahil gusto nila pumasok sa heaven na may dalang manok. You see, inward fruit of obedience is so important. That's why it's the number one fruit that God requires. And then, the outward fruit of our obedience. Their walk with the Lord, their good works, you could say their obedience to God was the fruit of their knowing God through the gospel of Jesus Christ. When we know Christ, we are intimately connected with Him. The outward fruit of obedience will just naturally flow. See, as Christian, we don't have to, but we want to obey God. Amen? There's a big difference, mga kapatid. There are many big difference of we are doing this because we have to. No, it should not be. Because we want to. We are serving God because we, we don't have to, but we want to. Because that want flows out from our love for Him. Amen? Inward fruit, outward fruit, and then the third category, the multiplying fruit of ministry. This is when we are so abiding in Christ that the fruit of Christ produces in us and produces growth through us in someone else. This is the essence of spiritual growth, spiritual fruits, spiritual gifts. That's why we train here in, in GCI. We are so focused on equipping you, equipping the saints. That's why we go through all this training, Alpha, Beta, LG, how to run Alpha, how to run LT. These are all important. And we are being used as vessel of God so that the new converts, new Christian who are walking, the baby Christian, we are at them side by side. And sometimes, even when we are tired from work, because we have LG, praise and thank God for your life, na kung saan you spend time with them, discipling them, teaching them, encouraging them to read the Word of God, to read the Bible. Hallelujah. See, Everything that we do is for the sake of helping others to enjoy their walk with Christ. Amen? That's the whole purpose of, of ministry. Sometimes the misconception of many Christians when they join ministry is to be famous. Sometimes joining ministry is just to get out from the house sa kanyang mabungangang asawa. Kaya siya nasa ministry. Sometimes it happens. Nangyayari ito mga kapatid, no? but it should not be. The multiplying fruit of ministry is the result when we abide in Christ. Amen? When we abide in Christ, you will just see those fruit. If you notice what Jesus said, He didn't say work for your fruit. What did He say? Just abide. Amen? Just hang on. Just continue to hang on even when things go wrong, when things are hard, when you are being criticized. Just hang on. Hang on. When people are... Saying what words against you, you are not good at that, go there, just hang on. Yun yung sinasabi ng Panginoon, just rest in me. And that's why I said, if I'll go back to that word, why is it John, the only disciple, who stayed Jesus till the end? Because most of the time, he will rest on the chest of Jesus. He remains in Jesus. As we remain in Jesus, there is no trials we cannot overcome. There's no temptation we can win against. There's no mess that God can bring order to our life as we abide in Him. You see, He talk about the picture. I'm only in my number two point. We are only in number two. We still have three. The most important of these four truths is the priority. The priority, He says, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit, of itself unless it abides in the vine neither can you sabi ng Panginoon neither can you unless you abide in me I am the vine you are the branches he who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit for without me you can do nothing how many times do you think from verses 1 through 5 the word abide is mentioned can you tell me 10 times 10 times with that very short passage from verse 1 to 5, 10 times the, the word mentioned, abide. Why? 
because it must be the priority of every Christian as we walk in this journey of our Christian life. Amen? You can do nothing, Jesus said. But I'm, a lot, maybe you will refute this word. And I am doing a lot of things apart from Christ. Yes, you might. Yes, you may be doing things apart from Christ. But all those things will not give eternal values at all. Amen? You might be doing good in your career. Yeah, that's good. You might be being promoted. You might be gaining wealth. Okay, but all those things apart from Christ are vain. Kaya nga sabi ng Panginoon, life that not, does not consist on the abundance of your possession, but your stand in God. You might be rich. You might have money in the bank. But if you don't have Christ, all of those things are useless. You see, he said, this is the priority of every Christian. Ten times, he said, in the whole chapter, 27 verses, 11 times the word abide is mentioned. It means that daily, we should have a union, communion. You see the word communion, why it's so important? That's why being in the body of Christ is so important because being alone is good. You, we have our what we call individual walk with God. Amen? Our individual walk. But it's also important of our corporate walk with God. Being with the brethren like this, in LGs, in life groups. That's why Paul says in, in uh, Hebrews 10, 24, 25, let us consider one another to stir up but love and good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as in the manner of some. Maraming naging complacent na. Many have been complacent just watching in the Zoom. Hello, those who are in Zoom. I'm not saying, no, thank you for watching with us. Those who are in the Philippines, of course, you cannot come. I'm talking about those who are in Kuwait that have time and can come to the church. But now complacent just watching in the Zoom. Amen? It's very clear in the... Yeah, you may... You see, we all know this as again. Pakilingong masabihin mo, this is not new to you. We have heard this many times. During these two years of pandemic, yeah, we are not allowed to be in close proximity. Two meters away. Baka nga ako, pero praise God, we are still going through that protocol. Kasi sa, sa Hawali, wala na kaming ganyan-ganyan eh. Kami dikit-dikit doon. Kasi liit lang ng bahay namin. Ang liit ng house church doon. So pag nag-spread kami, baka yung iba nasa banyo na, yung iba nasa kusina na. Okay, we don't have that place as big as this. But you see, the importance of being in communion, being in union with Christ, and being in communion with the body of Christ is essential also for our growth. Amen? This command, this is a command that the Lord Jesus Christ says, Abide in me. Kaya nga sabi rin ng Proverbs, hindi ba? Sharp iron sharpens iron. Walang kisna, there's no Christian who will grow individually. No one will grow individually. We all need our leaders. We all need our spiritual leaders. We will not be here without, without someone directing us, mentoring us, discipling us. So are you. So are we. That's why we are united in Christ. You are, we are united in the body. And there, You know this story. There's a couple who don't go to church anymore for three months. And then the pastor noticed, where is... Where is Mrs. G and Mr. G? They are in Poland. Hello, I don't know if you're watching, guys. But, hindi niya na nakikita yung mag-asawa and then he visit their house and the couple was expecting that the pastor would call them. Because, hey, you're not coming to church. What happened? Did someone offend you? They were expecting those words from the pastor and yet, they opened the door, they welcomed the pastor, the pastor sit near the fireplace and then they give him a tea and then he said, how are you guys? We miss you. That's the word of the pastor. And then he took one, one burning wood on that bunch of uh, wood, burning wood. And then it was away for around 10 minutes, still burning, still having fire. But after 15 minutes, it dried. The fire went out. And then after that, the pastor said goodbye. Good night. Hope to see you in the church. That's all the pastor's words were. Then he went out, and then the following Sunday, he saw the couple. He saw the couple. You see, 
even in that illustration, we see sometimes ourselves. We see the, the power of being in a corporate worship. There is power in corporate worship. Amen? There is power in our individual worship. I'm not saying there's no power. We can still feel, experience the tangible presence of God when we worship Him alone, individual. But there is great anointing also when we are corporately worshiping and that's why we have corporate prayer meeting this last week dito po tayong ulit sa mabula see to abide in Christ means to abide in his word daily to abide in Christ is to abide in him in worship like this to abide in Christ is to abide in him in prayer that's what all abiding is, being in the presence of God. That's why the psalmist compared the word of God. Again, he uses the analogy. The psalmist says in Psalms 1 to 3, blessed are the man. Blessed is the man. Other translation for that is happy. You want to be happy? Meditate on the word of God. It says there, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditate on it day and night. And then the psalmist make an analogy, a metaphor comparing that man to a tree. He says, that man is like a tree planted on the streams of water who yield its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Kanina binasa natin, verse 6. What did we read in verse 6? Those branches who seems attached but not attached is withered. Why? Because there's no nutrients, there's no nourishment coming from the branch, from the vine. And that's why it is withered. But a man who meditates on the word of God is like a tree planted by the streams of water who yields its fruit in season and whose leaves does not wither. And whatever he does, prospers. Hallelujah. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ means. It means to live in close fellowship with the Lord Jesus and his word. And we should be constantly focusing our time on Him. Kaya nga tinuruan tayo, we are being taught in hermeneutics to, to really make time for reading the Word of God. Don't hurry up. Sometimes one word will speak profoundly to us. Kaya ngayon nagbago na yung aking, uh, aking way of reading. Sometimes just one word. No? Behold. Do you know that word, what word means? Behold. Like Selah in the psalm, to look, to observe. Behold, we see here the fruitful branches. To live, what is it to abide in Christ? To live in obedience with His word, to trust Him. Everything that we do, to rely upon His strength, not our own strength, not on our own flesh. To look for Him in guidance, for guidance, wisdom, and direction. To submit to His Lordship, to rest in His love. That's why Paul says, to live is Christ. This is the whole Christian life. To abide in Christ. To abide in Him. Abiding is constant. Is that not just a posture that we maintain? It's a moment by moment attitude of the heart. Amen? It's a moment by moment attitude. If you love, we show our act of love by continually reading His Word daily. It remains Constantly, we are, remain, we are aware of our surrounding. We are aware of His presence. We are aware that we are being drifted away. Hindi nga ba, in, even in social media, in one day you spend, we spend already two hours in FB, and yet we cannot even spend 10 minutes in reading His Word. Abiding means moment by moment we abide in His Word. Abiding involved, remaining constantly connected to Him through His Word, as I said, worship and prayer. It's not just going through the flow, going through the motion. It means I am connected. I'm experiencing the life that Christ produced in His Word. Excited pa ba tayo? Are we still excited when we read the Word of God? Kapag ka, Lord, today, I know you have, you have a message for me. I'm gonna read your Word. Even, Lord, busy ako. I know I'm tired. My body tells me to sleep, but I'm gonna read your Word. Are we still excited? That's what the word abide means. To just rest. To rest in His word. To rest in His presence. 
Our vitality, our power for living Christian life, our sustenance and nourishment for growth, and without that sustenance, kaya maraming nanlalamig na Kristiyano. That's why many Christians grow cold in their faith. Because we are in the last days. I remember the time when this place is full packed. Well, many are being affected with the pandemic. Even Hawali, there are many Christians who don't come back in the church anymore. It, it's understandable. Doon nga nasusukat talaga kung hanggang saan yung ating faith. We still remain, even going through all the, the hardship, even going through, through all the, the criticism, even you're being offended many times in the church, but you are still here. Praise and thanks God, hallelujah, because you continually abide in Christ, hallelujah. You don't look upon those brethren who hurt your feelings, but you still here. Many has been gone because of the effect of pandemic, but we are still here. Hallelujah. Praise and thanks God. We are going to see that this pursuit of abiding is the only thing, the only thing for which we are created. Abide. Abide in Christ's love. This is the whole idea. Abide in Jesus is the only source of life who can produce the fruit the Father seeks for His glory. And then we come to this third profound truth in this narrative of Jesus, the pretenders. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. Five consequences. You see here, first, thrown away. Second, it dries up. And then they gather them. This is like... The narrative also of the Lord Jesus Christ on the last day when he will gather the, separate the sheep from the goat. Okay, they will gather them and then cast them into the fire. This is God's divine judgment to those who are pretenders. And then they are burned. You see here, let's, let us pause for a moment. Do you see here the scene of unbelief? Judas was there three years. Many Christians was it has been in the church for many years, but you don't see any spiritual growth at all. And there's danger on this. And that's why Jesus warns them, tells them how to live their life. Do you see how serious it is to play church? That in times when the Lord will ask fruit, the fruit of our righteousness through him, the fruit of the Spirit, and he cannot find. Remember the fig tree that Jesus cursed? He was looking for a fruit. There were so many leaves. No? Ito yung mga isa sa mga pretenders. Okay? There were so many leaves. There are people who can quote the Bible, but cannot live according to the Scripture. Does not live according to the Scripture. Don't be in impressed with the people who can just quote the Scripture and yet, Otherwise, live a life contrary to the word of God. Do not be impressed with those people. There are many outside this pe those people. But be impressed, be encouraged with those persons, with the brethren who can both quote the scripture and live by the scripture. Hallelujah. Amen. Dami magagaling sa Bible and yet you see the fruit of their lips. Puro mura. Puro kalaswaan. Not the fruit of inward character that the Lord is looking. You see here, those who are pretenders just go through the motion of church and not really being born again in their heart. So important. There are only, there's no gray area in the Lord Jesus Christ narrative. We cannot be the vine, it's Jesus is the vine. Amen? We are the branches. There are only two options. Or two categories that we will fall. Either we are the fruitful branches or you are the non-fruitful branches. Either you are saved or you are lost. Either you are going or bound to heaven or you are bound to hell. There's no gray area. And that's why Christ says, enter into the narrow road. For broad is the road and wide is the gate that leads to destruction. And many enters through it. But enter to the narrow road, the narrow gate. For small is the road and small is the gate to eternal life. And many, very, many, few finds it. Few finds it. See, Jesus Christ 
always condemn the Pharisees. Amen? But he loved the sinners. Jesus Christ in his word in John 5.39, you diligently seek the scripture thinking that you will find eternal life in them, but you continually reject me. It is the scripture that tells about me. This is what the Lord Jesus Christ is telling the Pharisees. He who believes in him, John wrote in 3.18, is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name the only begotten Son of God. As I said, my brethren, don't caught up with the flow of just serving Christ. Abide in Him day, daily. Be in continual communion with Him daily. Amen? Do not be pretenders. Make sure that our life is in constant alignment with the will of God in our lives. Amen? And then the last P, the promise. I will end here, mga kapatid. Verse 7 says, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. See, you see here the progression of, of our spiritual growth, and that's why Paul says that our growth is from glory to glory. Amen? Jesus said that if we bear much fruit, if we bear fruit, we will be pruned to bear more fruit. And as we abide in Him, we will bear much fruit. Not for our own glory, but to bring glory to the Father who brings that fruit to us, to our lives. Wala tayong ginawa. Even our salvation is a free gift. Amen? Our salvation is free gift. It's by the grace of God. We are here because of the grace of God. We become leaders because only by the grace of God. It's not about our righteousness, according to Titus 3.5, not by your works of righteousness, which you have done, but according to His grace that we are saved. See, it's according to, our, to the grace of God. Every success that the church accomplishes is for the glory of God. Not for the glory of pastor, not for the glory of leader, not even for your glory. It is for the glory of God alone. Because it is Him who works in us. As the Father loved me, Jesus continued, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandment and abide in His love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. We see here the, the answered prayer, the assurance of our answered prayer. He says in verse 7, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. You might again refute this word of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why is it I'm praying for the last five years, Lord, bakit in, why I'm not getting the answer of my prayer? I've been praying for the last 10 years, Lord, that you will change my husband, you will change my wife. But why until now I haven't received the answer of my prayer? You see, when Jesus said, that your desire shall be done for you, it is because when we abide in Christ, have you noticed this, mga kapatid? Brethren, have you noticed this? As we continue to grow spiritually, when we are abiding in Christ, in His Word, in His presence, in worship, in prayer, our prayer becomes less more of us, but more of other people. And that's the truth. Pag tayo nananatili sa Panginoon, sa presensya niya, sa kanyang salita, yung ating mga panalangin is less of our needs, but more of the needs of the brethren. More of the needs of, the, of other countries. That's why when we are abiding in Christ, that's why Jesus said, ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Because the desire, when we abide in Christ, no longer our own desire, but the desire of Him who called us. Hallelujah. To abide in Him and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Our prayer becomes less of us but more on of His kingdom. We pray for the salvation of our family. We pray for the salvation of our co-worker. We pray for the salvation of the whole world that they may come to the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's why Jesus says that it shall be done for you. So if this is a challenge to you, my brethren, this is just an encouragement. If you have been praying for your husband, for your wife to come to Christ, the Lord would say, 
it shall be done for you. Because it is His will. It's very clear in the scripture. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you and your household will be saved. That's in Acts chapter 16. This is the promise of God. So why quit now? Why quit now? This is an assurance of answered prayer as we abide continually communion and union with Christ daily with His word, our prayer one day will be answered because it is His will. And this is the confidence that we have in Him that if we ask according to His will, you see that word? According to His will, not my will. And it is will for mankind to be saved. That's why He's not coming yet until now. There are still, He knows that our family are still unsaved. They haven't come to the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They don't have yet a personal relation with Jesus Christ. But let me encourage you with this promise, this truth on the word of Christ. He who believes in him, not only he, but his household will be saved. So what is stopping you from continually praying for your spouse, for your children, for your friends? For your co-worker. Continue. And one day the Lord will answer you. And then even in 14, chapter 14 of verse 13 and 14. Whatever you ask in my name that I will do. And the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name I will do it. The fruit of multiplying ministry. You see we see here the assurance of salvation. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciple. You see that word, so? Kasunod siya ng bear much fruit. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. What are those fruit? Inward fruit of character. Outward fruit of obedience. The multiplying fruit of the ministry. When we witness others for Christ, we don't just keep it to ourselves. All these things are proof that truly we are Christ's disciple. Hallelujah. That truly we are abiding in Him. That even we don't like that person, we continually love them because it is the command of Jesus Christ. Love them anyway. Lord, I don't like His ways. Love Him anyway. Love her anyway. Masungit, Lord. Eh. Okay lang, love Him. No? Sometimes, in, in this, I would like to name this love-mometer. No? We know that we are abiding in Christ if our love-mometer is hot. And we know we are not abiding if we cannot even love our brethren. This is the command of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is His desire. This is His prayer. Chapter 17 of John says that it is my prayer that they be united in you, united in me and loving one another. This is the whole theme of the book of John. And even this, if you will go to 1 John, 2 John, it's all about the love of God and loving one another. So my question is, why can't we just get along together? There's a message for us here that if we are bearing this fruit, truly, we are God's disciple. Amen? And then we go to abounding love. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. There is an abounding love as we abide in Christ. That love will just naturally flow. You will not be easily offended in the church or somebody else at your work if that love, by abiding in Christ, because you are sucking all the nutrients, the, all the nourishment as we continue to abide in Christ. Can't you even notice? Hindi nyo ba napapansin? For me, I notice this. No, If I'm lacking prayer, if I'm lacking the, reading the Word of God, mabilis akong magalit. I'm easily angered. I don't know if you notice that in your Christian walk, but I notice that in myself. That if I'm not meditating the Word of God, the flesh comes out right away. Anger comes out right away. Hatred comes right away. Criticizing comes out right away because there's no love. You see, we can see if we are truly abiding in Christ, if we truly have that inward fruit of character, we can become more patient with others. 
Even in times that we hear news of rumors of wars, rumors of company downsizing, being terminated, you will be terminated, but you have that sense of perfect peace. Because you know you are abiding. You know that your Lord, your God, will provide everything that you need according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. You don't easily get panic. You don't easily call the brethren. Bro, sis, magtatanggalan na. Naku, paano na yung, ano ko, uh, paano na yung bahay na binabayaran ko? Paano na yung kondo ko? Paano na sasakyan ko? Pati damin mo naman kasing kinukuha sabay-sabay. Isa-isa lang. Tapos ngayon, nagpapanik ka. St. Peter, mag-usap tayo dyan mamaya. You see, abounding love. The love of Christ, as we abide in Him, will just naturally flow through us, in us. And then, the benefit of that love will be our neighbor. Kaya nga, that's the second greatest commandment. Eh. What's the first great commandment? Love God above all. Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And this is the second great commandment. Love thy neighbors yourself. And that love will naturally flow as we continually abide in Christ. Now you know if your love monitor is hot for Christ. Amen? Abounding love. And then the last is abundant, abundant joy. These things I've spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. God's desire for His people is to live a life that is full of joy. Of course, as I said, pruning is part of that joy. But in, even in times of pruning, we can have joy knowing that God is doing that for our benefit. God is not an egoistic God. He's not manipulating God. All these things, even the Lord Jesus Christ have said this word to his disciples because they continually care for him, even he's marching on the death, on the cross. Patuloy yung kanyang isip, his mind, his focus is in the welfare of his sheep. That's the love of Christ for us. And so again, Paulit-ulit, many times in the scripture that the Lord Jesus Christ is commanding us to love one another because that is the true proof that you are abiding in me. So let's just look for a moment and search our heart. Do we still have people in our hate list? No, masisan meron tayong mga hate list or very hard people to get along with. Number one ka. No? Until now, you know, you will only know this, we'll only see ourselves as we mirror ourselves in His Word. I'm not saying when you can become a Christian, when you are part of the church, it's all hallelujah and praise the Lord. Yeah, it's good. But there are times that we go through challenges. Amen? Just, the command of the Lord is just stay, abide. There are many who, who are not with us anymore because we have rules in the church that sometimes we, can, we want to be workers. You know? A personal testimony that many times I plan to get out of the church because I was offended. But the word of the Lord is just remain. Hang on. Hold on. Wait. For those who wait, upon the Lord shall renew their strength. This is the promise of the Lord. Amen. You know, you being here just a proof that you are abiding in Christ. Amen. We being here is just a proof that we want the, our desire to continually abide in Him even in tough times. Amen. Hallelujah. So there is joy in the presence of God. There is peace in the presence of God as we continue to abide in Christ. Let us bow down our head. Father God, Lord, you have commanded us this, to abide in you and to obey your commandments, O Lord. And we can only do this as we continue to abide in your words, abide in prayer, and continually seek your presence in our lives, O God. Lord, this world is full of troubles. 
Sometimes the pull of the world distract us, but it's my prayer as we focus on you, abide in you, Lord, that we will continue, Lord God, to live a victorious Christian life, a life that is fruitful, that you desire for every children, for every cold children of yours, that is your desire, that we may bear fruit, more fruit, much fruit, and fruit that remains. Lord, we cannot do this if we are away or apart from you. We can only do these things if we continually abide in you. Father God, may all the challenges that we have heard today, Lord, will put into action. Because this is part, Lord God, of our obedience. To love those who hurt us, to forgive them, O oh God, even though our flesh doesn't want to. But this is your word, to love them, to forgive them as you have forgiven us. Continually, in constant, daily communion with you. To abide in you so that we can live a life that is full of joy, that is full of peace. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, I pray. Amen and amen.